When it comes to the first point update of watchOS 11, today we have the third beta and in this video we're going to be looking at the software update. Right here you can see if I go into my settings and go to the software update page, the update size itself comes in at 544 megabytes quite a substantial update right there and you can see it's in the process of preparing right now I just need to connect my device to a charger and just to show you the version that I'm updating from this is the first time I'm going on watchOS 11.1 which explains why the update size that you're seeing right here is around 544 megabytes if you're already on watchOS 11.1 betas then the update size you're going to be seeing is going to be much smaller than that now just just to keep you in the loop this is not all that apple released today you can see when it comes to soap operating systems released we have tvos 18.1 beta 3 we have watchOS 11.1 beta 3 of course this is the video for that and we have vision os 2.1 beta 3. Unfortunately, there is no iOS 18.1 beta 6 yet and there is no macOS 15.1 beta 6. These are delayed and we only got those for now. So let me quickly update my device and then we'll see what's new. My Apple Watch is now up to date and if we go into the settings, go to general and go to about, you can see the new build number that we have on watchOS 11.1 the build on beta 3 is 22R5559F so this ends with an F and in terms of stability it should just go to show you or tell you that we still have a couple of betas to go before we can see this watchOS 11.1 being released to the general public and you know not that it has much to offer but let's talk about some of the changes with this update the first one that I noticed has to do with the corresponding iOS version so on your device on iPhone if you're on iOS 18.1 you'll notice a new shortcut you know if you use the shortcut application you see a shortcut for health which has been added in the shortcuts app and you can set automations for that and then another new thing that has changed with watchOS 11.1 that I noticed if you go into your health application on the iPhone and then open up the health app and you search for the sleep apnea or sleep under the section you go all the way down you see uh, the section that says sleep apnea and you can always found, find it in the browse section by searching for sleep and you can see sleep apnea notifications for me if I click there here it says that uh, it tells you what sleep apnea is and it's basically a respiratory condition where you experience repeated disturbances in breathing while asleep and unfortunately for me you can see uh, sleep apnea is not available now it just says sleep apnea notifications are not available on your apple watch which is okay because the apple watch that i'm using right now this is the apple watch ultra one so the apple watch ultra one doesn't support this sleep apnea function apple watch is the support this are the apple watch series 9 series 10 and apple watch ultra 2 it's kind of unfortunate the ultra one doesn't support it because it's a fairly capable device but uh, at least it doesn't say that it's not supported in my country origin and the reason I say that is because if you look at a recent update from uh, the news right here the Apple Watch's new sleep apnea detection feature was approved in Canada just last week and it was also approved war in the US by when it got the FDA approval and it's going to be releasing in more countries Apple says up to uh, around to about around about 150 other countries and regions something that I've been experiencing on my Apple watch that I hope this update fixes is the continuity camera function on watchOS 11 so I want to see if this update fixes that because every time I would go here and go to the camera it would simply revert to the black screen and you can see it's actually on the black screen and it has a long delay okay finally you can see it's now connecting but yeah look at that delay and if I, this, I was experiencing this on watchOS 11.0 and on watchOS 11.1 it seems to be the case so let's give it some time and try again. Yeah so this seems to be an issue at least for me 
uh, even on watchOS 11.1. Let me know if this is something that you're experiencing as well. And hopefully Apple looks into this. Now, something else that I wanted to highlight on this watchOS 11.1, as a person who's been using the Apple Watch Ultra 1 from the moment it came out, I'll be happy to let you know that at least for me in my experience that I've seen when it comes to the battery life and battery performance on the Apple Watch Ultra 1, my battery health isn't the greatest. You can see it's on 89%. That's the maximum capacity that I have. But my battery life isn't like going as down as much as it was on watchOS 11.0 and that's been my experience right here you can see I basically charged it overnight up to like 6 a.m and then I had to briefly connect it to the charger in order to install the update but it's holding up pretty well and I'm able to just about finish a day with pretty good enough charge and you can see right there 78% I probably gained a couple of percentages from putting it on the charger for the update which is something that's good. Now something that you need to see on the Apple Watch with watchOS 11.1 and the latest iOS version this iPhone is on iOS 18.1 and look at the new Siri animation. It has a new sound and it has a new animation and at the same time if you tap here you can type to Siri and you can see that cool animation but unfortunately on the Apple Watch we don't get the new Siri but there is something that carries over. You can see how the Siri animation looks. It's still the old iOS 18 or iOS 17 Siri UI. But if we go to our digital crown right here and then go to the do not disturb section, you can see this reduce interruption focus has been added and it, it works hand in hand with Apple intelligence to try and reduce interruptions. You can see on iOS 18.1, this is actually something that's there. And if I was to go here and enable that focus and say on for now, I'll click on, you can see it has a new animation right there. And on the iPhone, there's going to be a pop-up as well to tell you that, hey, you've enabled this reduced interaction focus mode. And this is something that's cool. One of the issues that I realized here on watchOS 11.1 is when you set this reduce interruption focus it has you know a cool animation and you can see it resembles some sort of Apple intelligence but then when you set it it breaks the control center so I'm unable to like touch my screen to be able to go up and down you can see the only way I'm able to do this is use the digital crown and at the same time if I try and disable the reduce interaction focus mode it doesn't really work so this is kind of unfortunate but if I wanted to disable this then I would have to go on my iPhone and if I disable the reduce interaction focus mode right there you can see it's gone off and now if I go back to my Apple watch and try and touch it now it works so that's kind of a bug hopefully they fix that and you know it wouldn't hurt to bring the new Siri UI or animation to the Apple watch even though it won't get most of the machine learning features, it will be cool to have. Just to finish it off, I want to show you a few products that are rumored to be coming this month in October 2024. So the first Apple product that's on the way is an M4 MacBook Pro. So if you're thinking of buying a MacBook Pro, this is certainly not the best time to buy one as there's been rumors of slightly reduced pricing and a minimum of 16 gigs of RAM starting. There's also iPad mini 7 that's rumored to be coming and we are expecting an M4 iMac with slight improvements in performance and a Mac mini with an M4 chip and newer so that's just my quick two cents here and update on this watchOS 11.1 let me know what you think about this video if you liked it give it a like and subscribe and i'll uh, we'll see you in the next video peace